There are, in my opinion, only really two cryptocurrencies available now that have a chance to significantly alter our present financial system. These assets include XRP and Bitcoin, respectively. In this video, I'll explain why, in my opinion, XRP will ultimately triumph over Bitcoin, despite the fact that Bitcoin currently has greater liquidity and market domination. I want to discuss some fascinating issues that, in my opinion, aren't often brought up by the XRP community. And how do any of these relate to Satoshi Nakamoto's alleged reappearance to Twitter earlier today? We'll discuss that in this video, but our main focus will be on why XRP has such a significant edge over a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. But before the video ends, I want to draw your attention to some important data regarding a potential bank collapse that was released later today. I don't want to discuss the current state of the banking industry and how cryptocurrencies may profit from it. You won't want to miss it, so be sure you stay for that. I don't want to start this video by specifically addressing the Satoshi Nakamoto return to Twitter rumors as they really went off on Twitter earlier today. It has been the topic of frenzied conversation. In my opinion, Satoshi Nakamoto is not likely to be a Twitter user. I believe this is merely a con artist posing as him. Therefore, use caution when communicating with this account. One, it's a verified account, therefore he would have to provide his ID to get confirmed, which is the main reason why I personally don't think there is any chance this is him. I don't see how he could have accomplished that. Additionally, the individual or group spent a lot of time attempting to remain incognito. Since it makes no sense to me at all, I doubt they would take the chance of continuing to X. The fundamental point I want to make here is that even while I don't believe this Satoshi Nakamoto account is truly Satoshi Nakamoto, I still don't think there is any way imaginable. It kind of undermines all of Bitcoin's legitimacy. Since the US government does not know who Satoshi Nakamoto is, ultimately everyone will find out since the US government will not continue to keep that information a secret indefinitely. Hal Finney tweeted in 2009 that he was running on Bitcoin, which is the main reason I don't think he'll be able to maintain his anonymity. For those of you who are unaware, Finney was the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction. Hence, we are acquainted with a pioneering figure in the Bitcoin industry. Is he now a part of the group that includes Satoshi Nakamoto? It's highly likely. But I want to stress that if we know just one individual who was active in the early days of Bitcoin, we can figure out the rest. Bringing someone like Fendi into a back room and telling him, okay, tell us everything you know, is all that is necessary for an intelligence agency to obtain information from him. Additionally, in the early days of Bitcoin development, people weren't as discreet. Because they didn't genuinely believe what they were developing would be a huge deal at the time, they are using public IP addresses. The moment Bitcoin was created, they were thinking, hey, this is an experiment that probably won't amount to much. So they weren't very stealthy when they were building it. Therefore, there are numerous ways for a strong intelligence agency to determine Satoshi Nakamoto's identity. They most likely already did it. Some of the pioneers, as I previously mentioned, are already well known, and they weren't being all that clandestine in the beginning. Now, the primary reason I bring up this fact is that it highlights one of the most significant distinctions between XRP and Bitcoin. I believe we can all agree that XRP is in much more advanced technology. However, a lot of people assert that the biggest feature of Bitcoin is that nobody knows who Satoshi is, hence nobody built it. Well, aside from the fact that that comment was obviously said by someone, it is also completely ludicrous. Just like XRP, Bitcoin was invented by someone. Simply said, it doesn't accomplish what a cryptocurrency is supposed to achieve. So many people believe that the fact that Bitcoin was founded in secret is what makes it unique. However, none of those individuals truly pay attention to the cryptocurrency's underlying technology. They emphasize Bitcoin's anonymity as its greatest feature, but they ignore how quickly transactions are completed. They do not prioritize effectiveness. When developing a payment system, they don't pay attention to the important factors. The failure of Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer payment system is something that even some of the largest Bitcoin miners of today kind of acknowledge. They changed the story. Because it was never able to live up to its potential as a genuine next-generation financial and payment system, they are now referring to it as digital gold. I'd want to give you a brief illustration of why XRP is so much superior in situations like this. And that truly relates to a change that is being suggested today. That amendment is a clawback one. What will this accomplish? Doing so will enable institutions to issue assets on the XRP ledger and subsequently let them to recover transactions that were made using those issued assets. However, if a bank were to create a Bank of America coin or a US dollar coin on the XRP ledger and a transaction occurred with that coin that was purported to have been carried out by a terrorist group or a bad organization, they could actually withdraw that money. This does not mean that these institutions will be able to claw back XRP or pull back XRP cent. For someone who is a Bitcoin maxi, a super, super decentralized maximalist, 
who believes that institutions should just follow the same rules as everyone else. These individuals would detest something like this to the hilt. However, a person with common sense and knowledge of how these organizations function would know that no institution would ever develop a currency on a public blockchain that they could manage. So this is the ideal illustration of why, in my opinion, XRP has a distinct edge over something like Bitcoin. While leaving the most crucial components of a cryptocurrency like XRP itself not subject to these clawbacks, it embraces the greatest aspects of what institutions need and want and is vitally necessary for them to operate in our next generation financial system. In order to alter our financial system, the XRP ledger is being positioned to be an institutionally ready solution. In the meantime, decentralization maximalists are preventing Bitcoin from taking off. The folks who are so afraid of even the slightest change in Bitcoin are simply being left behind. One of the key reasons I believe the XRP ledger offers so many benefits is because of this. We observe the XRP ledger attracting automated market makers. Sidechains are visible. Smart contracts are present. All these various instruments that institutions will require to fully develop their upcoming line of financial services offerings. While all of this is going on, Bitcoin's only redeeming feature is an anonymous founder who might not even be anonymous. These are indeed the grounds for my belief that XRP has a distinct advantage over Bitcoin. Bitcoin is now leading the field. It has greater liquidity. It is larger. More holders are present. But I believe that as we get into this new class of digital assets, where institutions are actually making use of the assets, we will witness a total reversal of this story. Overall, I just thought this clawback amendment was incredibly fascinating because it showed how these two assets differed and how these chains will be used in the future in fundamentally different ways. Then I want to kind of turn to talk about what is happening in the financial industry. Moreover, this is rather irrelevant. However, I find it to be utterly interesting. And this chart is among the wackiest you'll ever see. The screen could be difficult to view. However, we can see February 1973 from here. Here we can view February 2023. In essence, it covered the previous 50 years of banking history. And as we can see, bank deposits are fallen over a precipice. Because interest rates are so high and the treasury market offers higher returns, People are moving their money out of banks because they are receiving no benefit from keeping their money there. Interest rates for the majority of big banks are remain around 0%. There is therefore no possibility that this is sustainable given that the banking industry is currently experiencing a severe liquidity crisis. The fact that the economic experiment we have been doing for the past two years is still ongoing shocks me to my core. I find it unbelievable that banks have not exploded at the sight of this graphic. Every single day they move billions of dollars. In actuality, it claims that $2.5 billion flows daily from banks into the treasury market. The large banks have a serious problem with this. They will be in serious difficulty if they can't keep these deposits. And it's one of those things that really just makes me think that these institutions have more pressing problems than attempting to compete with someone like Ripple when I look at something like a City coin, a JP Morgan coin, or a Bank of America coin. The purpose of this video isn't actually to do that. Because banks are currently in serious difficulties, I just wanted to emphasize that fact. I also wanted to draw attention to the fact that the U.S. government is currently making ludicrous payments on its debt. Due to rising interest rates, the U.S. government is now paying more on its debt than it is for its national defense for the first time ever. What point am I attempting to make with these numbers, then? The current state of the market is completely unsustainable. Though it has in the past under very different economic circumstances, the current high interest rate environment is ineffective. Our country's vital infrastructure is being destroyed in full. The U.S. government is spending more on interest payments than its own military, while banks are losing money like crazy. This is a significant issue that cannot continue. I bring this up because the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates, which is why we even entered the severe bear market we have been experiencing over the past couple of years, why the stock market fell precipitously, and why cryptocurrency prices plummeted. Many people believe that we will continue to experience high interest rates for a very long time, that we will never return to a period of low interest rates, and that the Federal Reserve will continue to raise interest rates. They can't afford to do that, guys. Due to the exorbitant interest rates, either this country will go bankrupt or every single significant bank will be destroyed. You might be correct if you believe that scenario to be likely. Personally speaking, I don't believe that will occur. We are actually much closer to achieving that than many people believe, and I believe the Federal Reserve is currently playing a very risky game by attempting to keep interest rates as high as possible in order to try to drive inflation back down to normal levels. These three charts show the inflation over the last few months, and as you can see, we are tumbling down to the mean as you can see right here. This is quite encouraging. Because the Federal Reserve should decrease interest rates again since inflation is trending in the correct direction. 
while with these high interest rates, we are essentially entering an unsustainable phase. I believe that the Federal Reserve will eventually have to change its position about these high interest rates. And as soon as that occurs, we will witness a return of liquidity to the Bitcoin market. I believe it has already begun to manifest. The Federal Reserve decided not to raise interest rates last week. Positive price increases have been observed in the market, but I believe that this is just the beginning. Overall, this should only serve to demonstrate to you that those who claim that interest rates will continue to rise for a very long time aren't paying attention to what's happening on the back end. Since this graph right here should make it clear to you all how sustainable the existing environment is, guys. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did, as they really do matter a lot.